These four books have changed the way that I parent and have empowered my kids to become their best selves. I have six kids and when they were just babies, we had a lot of problems with them trying to communicate because they wanted certain things when they were young. And when they're super duper young, you know, they're just infants, you know that they need to be changed and then they need to be held and warm and you know, all those things. But as they get slightly older, they start having opinions on what they want, but they can't communicate it. So their needs are there and their desires are there, but they don't have the skills to be able to communicate what they want. And so they scream and they yell and they throw temper tantrums and it can be really frustrating. So I don't remember which child we decided to do this on, but we started teaching them at a very young age um, uh, sign language. And this was a game changer because long before they were able to use words, they could use sign language to tell us what they wanted. We had four signs that they used quite often that really did make it a totally different game for us. And it was just change, they needed a, a diaper change, and that was usually they were just wet and I didn't know it, um, or more and eat, eat, this is milk, so they would sign that for eat, and then they all love to rub their blankets, and so this was the sign for blanket for most of our kids. Um, and those four signs would just really enabled them to be able to say, this is what I want, and to communicate that with me, and then I could give it to them, because I wasn't keeping it back from them just trying to be mean, I just didn't know what they wanted. And so as soon as we could communicate, it made everything so much easier. Just like that, I have found that there are four skills that are taught in these four books that have been absolute game changers for us when it comes to interacting with our kids and helping them to communicate what they need with us and for us to be able to communicate with them the skills they need to get better at life and to deal with their emotions and with all of the things that they need. These things have really, really changed my life as a parent and my kids' lives too because it helps them know that they're in charge of how they feel and they're in charge of what they can do. So I wanna go over these four books with you today. They're all by Nicolene Peck and these are four skills that she was taught when she was um, fostering kids uh, several years ago and she also taught them in several different venues but this book is perfect to teach it. The color, the pictures in it are wonderful, the storyline, it's a poem. She tells it in a poem format and it's just really lovely um, format to teach these skills. So the four different skills that each of these books, each book teaches one skill and the skills are following instructions, disagreeing appropriately, accepting a no answer, and accepting a consequence. If your kids, when your kids learn how to do these four skills really well, it will get rid of temper tantrums, it gets rid of power struggles, it gets rid of um, not being able to express their feelings, they're gonna be able to say, hey, this is why I want what I want, and it helps them be clear on what they want, and so it really helps them be in control of themselves. But it's all about um, self-government that the point of all of these skills is to learn to govern yourself. Learn to govern your thoughts, learn to govern your emotions, learn to govern your words, learn to govern your body language. And as your kids get older, you want them to have these skills. This makes such an enormous difference in their ability to interact with people and their ability to just move forward in life because these are the skills that you need to be able to deal with people. In fact, if you talk to employers today, they say, we can teach you all the skills that you need here, all these hard skills, but you need some soft skills. You need to be able to know how to communicate. You need to be able to show up on time. You need to be able to um, really have self-government. And so that's what these four books are about. Okay, I wanna talk to you about each of these four books. They are beautiful, the, they're hardback, and they're just gorgeous. This one is about disagreeing appropriately, and all four of these books follow very similar um, patterns of behavior, so you don't have to memorize long lists of lots of different skills. There are simple skills. This one on disagreeing appropriately has five steps. You look at the person with a calm face, voice, and body. You say, I know, or I understand, and then their point of view. Say what you think, and then drop the subject. So what this is going to look like in your life is say that you're disagreeing on what to eat for dinner. And so your child says, no, mom, I really hate whatever it is. And um, you say, well, we're going to eat it anyway. And they say, may I disagree appropriately? And you always have to say yes. <laughs> you just have to say yes. You say, yes, you can disagree appropriately. And they will say, they'll look at you. 
they will have a calm face, they will have a calm voice, and their whole body will be calm. So no fists, no gritted teeth, they're just calm. And they will say, I know that you think we should eat whatever, or I understand that you've already made dinner or whatever, but they state your point of view first. And then they say, but I really hate tacos, or I, we just ate this a little bit ago and I'm tired of it. And whatever their thing is, they communicate it with you what they feel. And then they drop it. This is my favorite one. But here's the thing, and you don't have to do this, but I think it's most powerful if you do, almost always let them win on this. If it doesn't matter, and they have chosen to go through the skill of disagreeing appropriately, like I really wouldn't change dinner for them. That would be one that I, I stuck on. But on a lot of things that kids get upset about, and they say, I, I wanna disagree appropriately, let them win because it's not always about what you're disagreeing on. It's about knowing how to disagree. And if it doesn't matter, encourage that by saying, okay, I see where you're coming from. I understand that you feel this way. I will now adapt so that we can meet in the middle. And so that really gives them the power to be able to communicate with you, which is huge. And it's not a fight. That is also super huge. So that's the first one. It's not the first one. It's one of them. You can do them in any order you want, but this is disagreeing appropriately. The next one I want to cover is, I mean, these are so cute. These are named after each of her four kids. Porter earns a quarter. This one is accepting a no answer. Now in life, there are so many things that are no answer when we lose a game, when we lose something that we, we had, you know, we, we actually lose it. This is what happens in this book. He loses his quarter. Um, when, we, when we ask for something and we get a no answer, no, you're not going to get that, we don't allow that. Or when we just want something and circumstances don't allow us to have it. You wanna be first on the swing and somebody else got to be on the swing, that would be considered a no answer. Anytime you want something and you don't get your way, that is a no answer. So how do you deal with that? That is what this book is about. And it again follows basically the same pattern as the first one. You look at the person with calm face, voice, and body, say, okay, or disagree appropriately, which is what we just did, um, drop the subject, and that's it. So when you go through these, again, they have to say, in this case, you've got, you know, whatever, you've told them no, and, or they've just received something in their life that is a no, and they have to look at the person who has told them no, it's usually mom, and then they have to say with a calm face, voice and body, they either say, okay, or my kids will say, yes, mom, or they will say, may I disagree appropriately? So those are the two paths. You either say, okay, and be okay, or you disagree appropriately and be okay that way. Either way, you're in control of your emotions and you can decide how you want to respond emotionally to this situation, this frustration, because that's what a no answer is. It's facing frustration and that's what life is. It's frustrating. And so this is a super important skill to learn how to just deal with the things that are hard in your life. And these can be taught at a really young age and retaught as they get super old. <laughs> um, the next one, is following instructions. Now instructions can be obviously, hey, I need you to go do this for me, or they can be what are kind of standing instructions. We as a family do, I don't know, it, we wake up on time and then we, we eat dinner and we eat meals together uh, as a family. These are standing instructions. So we don't have to all the time say, this is our thing, we have to do this, guys, you have to do this again. It's just a standing instruction and everybody knows that they need to do it. So those are the two kind of instructions, the ones that you give in the moment, please go pick that up, please come over here or whatever, and the ones that are just regular part of being in the family. So how this one goes, you look at the person with a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or disagree appropriately, and do the task immediately, then check back. The instruction that you gave to them was um, please go vacuum the front room or whatever. So when you get down to okay, then you go do it. You go vacuum. And this one, this number five is super important. And I don't always do this one as well as I should, but it's really important that they come back and they check in and say, I've done it. And this is really important because it closes it 
for them. They know that now it's done. They've honored themselves. They've shown honor to you. You have accepted that they are complete. And, and it's really great because you can say, good job. You have completed the task. I'm really proud of you for not only doing what I asked you to do, but to do it in the right way that you were supposed to. Because you could go vacuum the floor and take hours about doing it and have to be asked over and over and not do a very good job with it. So there's the task of vacuuming and then there's how they go about it. And this is really the how they go about it. And you want to be sure to say that is a separate thing that you're doing really well and I'm proud of you for handling that. That is something you need all through life. So the last one right here, this is her last son. This is accepting a consequence. Life happens and sometimes we don't disagree appropriately. Sometimes we don't obey. Sometimes we don't accept um, a no answer, any of these things. And so then we get a consequence. When, the, when you hand a consequence to your children and the consequence is not an angry thing. It's not something you're doing to get back at them or to punish them. It's simply a natural result. And you say, I asked you to vacuum the floor and you didn't vacuum the floor. And so now you need to have a consequence, which means generally you have to do something, another chore. Now the other chores they have to do, are not big. You, again, you're not trying to punish them. You'll say, I need you to go pick up those three books and put them away so that they can have a win and they can say, I've taken an action to correct my bad behavior and they can report back to you. So again, none of this is trying to be punitive. It's just training them in how to use these. So the consequence follows the same pattern. Whenever they receive a consequence, they have to follow these five steps. They got to look at you with calm face, voice and body and say, okay, so she's talking, she's in this story, she's having him, he's actually doing it as a baseball thing. But so she says, say, okay, a second, but it, that's a baseball reference. Um, then you do the consequence and then you're done. So you have to say, okay, my bad. I'll go pick up those three books and then tell report you're done. That's the end. Um, Accepting the consequences is really important because this is life. Life happens and you have to be able to accept that I will adjust and deal with what life has given me. And it is not always, I mean, a lot of times when you're growing up, when your kids are growing up, it is you as the mom or the dad who's giving out consequences. But as life goes on, it's not anymore. It becomes teachers or it becomes friends or it becomes a lot of different, it becomes the, the driver next to you. People who are giving you no answers and who are, um, or giving you instructions in a way that you don't really like. And so these skills that you're instilling in them at a young age are really, really important to help them deal with all sorts of things as life goes on. Um, this is all about self-government, which is all about power. The only government that matters at all in this life is to have self-government. And these have really, really changed how I interact with my kids. It takes out a lot of the, um, the strife. We're no longer fighting. We're just working on skills, just like we're working on, you know, tying your shoe or we're working on learning how to cook. We're just going to work on how to accept a no answer. And once we say this is just a life skill, it stops being an emotional thing and it starts being something that we can work on together and win together because we're on the same team together. And these books have made a huge difference for me on that. You can buy these on Amazon. I am not sure if she sells them directly. I will say they are really hard to find at lots of places. Don't buy them for more than 20 bucks each because you can get them on Amazon for that. But I've seen them other places that are really, really expensive. And I just think they're in short supply and that's why they're expensive, but I'm not sure. Anyway, don't get ripped off, but they are really good books and they're, I'm, I'm glad to own them. Uh, but it was something that took me a while to buy uh, because I knew the skills and so we just practiced the skills without the books. Now that we have them, I really do love them. They're a part of my foundation week. They're something that we start every school year with. We go over them, we review them periodically so that kids remember these skills because they are something that you need to remember over time and practice over time. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you and I hope you consider subscribing or encouraging others to subscribe so that I can beat my husband when it comes to subscribers. First one to a thousand wins. So thank you so much and I'll catch you on the next one.